Uh, you've been a strong critic of the idea of lockdowns. Sweden has avoided the sort of lockdowns that we're seeing here in Australia. Tell us your thoughts. Are lockdowns the correct way to go? You introduced me by saying that I would, would say that you got it all wrong. I don't think you got it all wrong, but you painted yourself into a corner and I'm watching with interest how you and 100 other countries will climb out of the lockdown. Because I don't think any government that I know gave a minute's thought about how they would get out of the different lockdowns that are installed. Take your school closure, for example. If you close the schools, when are you going to open them? What's the criteria? I don't think anyone thought about that when the closure was, was decided on. Now, Johan, you said that you think the results are going to be similar across most countries, regardless of yes. the approach they've taken. Can you take us through that? Seeing is a tsunami of a rather mild infection spreading around the globe. And I think there's very little chance to stop it by any measure we take. Most people will become infected by this and most people won't even notice. We have data now from Sweden that shows that between 98 and 99 percent of the cases have had a very mild inf infection or didn't even realize they were infected. Wow. So we have a, this spread of, of this mild disease around the globe and most of it is happening where we don't see it. It's among people that don't get very sick spread it to someone else that doesn't get very sick. And what we're looking at is a thin layer at the top of people who do develop disease, an even thinner layer of people that go into intensive care, and an even thinner layer of people who die. But the real outbreak is happening where we don't see it. Now here in Australia, we've done an incredibly good job suppressing it. I'm wondering, do you think we have done too good a job? Is it possible to do too good a job suppressing it in the early stages, such that then you don't ever wind up being able to take the foot off the, the brake, as it were, on your restrictions? But I'm, uh, you may succeed, and New Zealand may also succeed. But I've been asking myself, when uh, New Zealand or Australia has stamped out every case in the country, what do you do for the next 30 years? Will you close your borders completely, quarantine for everyone who's going to Australia or New Zealand? Because the disease will be out there. I don't know how you're going to handle that, but um, that's your problem. <laughs> but you think that at the end of the day, they're all pretty much going to end up with the same fatalities, the same results, uh, the same yep. uh, deaths, regardless of what measures they took. Explain that. Basic, basically, I think that's the same. Because like I said, the real epidemic is invisible and it's going on all the time around us. The other thing with the lockdown is when you open it, you will have more cases. So the countries who pride themselves in having few deaths now will get, get these deaths when they start lifting the lockdown. So now you mentioned that the overwhelming majority of people who get this disease have no symptoms or very minimal symptoms. Do we even know yes. the real fatality rate of coronavirus? And what is no. it? Well, it's around 0.1%. We were told it was 3% initially, 2%. Uh, are you saying now if it's 0.1, that's pretty much the same fatality rate as the regular flu, isn't it? Mm, I think it's a bit higher, actually. I have said before in Sweden that this is like a severe influenza. I don't think that's completely true. It will be a bit more severe than influenza, but not okay. maybe double, but not tenfold. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yes. Sorry, Professor, you've said the best policy, the correct policy would simply be to protect the old and the frail. Is that correct? Yes, and that's the Swedish, Swedish, the Swedish model has sort of two pillars. One is only use measures that are evidence-based, and there are two that are evidence-based, and one is washing hands is good. We've known that for 150 years, since uh, uh, Semmelweis in, in Austria a long time ago. The other is social distancing. If you don't get too close to other people, they won't infect you. And the third may be trust people. People are not stupid. If you tell them what's good for them, they will do what you say. You don't need this soldiers in the street and police and it's unnecessary.